Yo, what is up? It's Mike the NBA Guy, and as you can see, Clutch Points has released their top 25 players in the NBA going into next season. Now, I was thinking about doing my own, like, top 10, top 15 for next season, but uh, Clutch Points beat me to it, first of all, so I figured I'd just react to them. Um, I... You know, I, I, I have high hopes for them, because unlike ESPN, I don't really follow Clutch Points very much, so I have no idea if their opinions are usually good or absolute doo-doo. So, just getting right into this, I just thought this would be fun to react to. Alright, so let's start. 2020 season's finished, blah 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 blah. Honorable mentions. Bam Adebayo, Pascal Siakam, Paul George, Kemba Walker, Russell Westbrook. I would probably agree with those. Um, ah, man, Paul George being that low. I mean, Paul George was kind of cheeks this season. I I guess it's fair because he was he was pretty bad. Although number twenty five, Kyle Lowry. Personally, I definitely think Siakam and Adebayo are going to be better than Lowry next season. And it especially comes down to the fact that Lowry's just old. You know, he's like 34, 35. He's not getting better. He's he's going to get worse next season. I don't expect him to be an all-star again. All right? So, nothing atrocious, especially after how Siakam played in the playoffs, but I do think Siakam and Bam will be better than Lowry. Bradley Beal, biggest all-star game snub next, last year. No question about that. Chris Paul. Down at 23 kind of surprised me, and Carl Anthony Towns down at 22 kind of surprises me a lot, too. Even though he was shit this season, I feel like this is a little too low for both these guys, although Chris Paul is freaking old. Chris Paul's like 35, 36. I really do think this was his last season as even a borderline superstar player. Like, this was definitely, he should be in the top 25. I might have him a little higher. I have to see who's ahead of him, but, um... Man, this is, I don't know, it feels wrong to have either of these guys this low. Carly Anthony Towns is weird, because he's so freaking talented, but he just doesn't get his team to wins. He just doesn't. Devin Booker, 21. Um, I would not have Devin Booker over Carl Anthony Towns, although they were great. They were fantastic. So, you know what, I'm totally fine with Devin Booker here. Trey Young, no issues with that either, round number 20. That might be a tiny bit too high just because of how atrocious his defense is. Um, because he was like statistically like the second worst defender in the league last season. That's pretty terrible. Uh the fuck? Swept out of the playoffs. Not at fault for any of the losses. He was sensational. 30 points, 12 rebounds, a block on 46% from the field. Yeah, he was amazing. Why the fuck is he at number 19? <sighs> okay. Um, well, this list is trash. 19? 19? Okay, in the future, I'm doing these with face cams because I feel like my voice alone doesn't convey, doesn't convey, like, how atrocious I think this is. 19. And Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. No, not better than Joel Embiid, especially coming back from an injury. Zion Williamson, who was like the worst defender in the bubble ahead of Joel Embiid. No. John Moran ahead of Joel Embiid. No. This is trash. Why on earth? What? What? My goodness, what are you doing? Joel Embiid at number 19? God, oh, okay. I'm gonna try and move past this, but... Come on. That's atrocious. Whoever, who wrote this article? Who wrote this article? Dave Monaco, you, you, you're bad at your job, man. You're bad at your job. <sighs> Kyrie Irving, number 15, I can see that, I agree with that, Jamal Murray, number 14, no. Jamal Murray was absolutely amazing in the playoffs, I would, yeah, have him in the top 25, but um, over Kyrie Irving, over Joel Embiid, over even like, 
I'm hesitant to even put her, put him over Devin Booker or Chris Paul or Carl Anthony Towns. Like, I think he should be much closer to the bottom here. Amazing playoffs, but look, I gotta see him in the regular season first. Jamal Murray could be this good, and if you're a Denver fan, you're totally within your right to think that he's really this good, but... I don't know. He was great in the playoffs last year, too, and then he kind of dropped off. Now, he wasn't nearly as great as he was this season, but the point still stands. He's not like, I just can't see him performing at this absurd level. Although, realistically, this absurd level is better than the 14th best player in the NBA. That's easily top 10. But still, I don't think he's going to be quite top 15 yet. I think, like, bordering around number 20 is probably closer to where I would put Jamal Murray. He was amazing, though. Jason Tatum, fuck, I haven't seen Ben Simmons yet. If they don't have Ben Simmons on this list at all, does this dude hate the Sixers? Because, okay, look, I haven't seen him yet, so maybe he's on this list, but if they had Joel Embiid at number 19 and they don't have Ben Simmons on the list at the top, they didn't even have him as an honorable mention. Okay, Whew. just gotta calm down. Jason Tatum, number 13, honestly might be too low for Tatum. To be honest, like Donovan Mitchell, number 12, Mitchell was amazing in the playoffs, but it was just one series. I think Tatum is going to be better than Mitchell next season. Absolutely. He's a better defender and a slightly better offensive player. Like, he's better than him in almost every aspect. Damian Lillard, 11. I would probably agree with that. He could be slightly higher. Jokic, number 10. Um, that's too low, in my opinion. I think Jokic is too low on this list. He's amazing. Um, him and Embiid are going to be battling for who's the best center in the NBA for the next five years at least. Um, he should be higher than this. James Harden, number nine. What? Um, that's too low. Best offensive player by pure metrics ever, which I definitely wouldn't agree with. But so long on this list because we've seen it year after year isn't conductive for playoff success. So, that's a fair point, actually. Props to Clutch Sports for having a little bit of logic here. However, I think a lot of the blame has been on Mike D'Antoni and the fact that he has coached James Harden the same way for the last several seasons. And his coaching method does not work in the playoffs. That's why I did not want the Sixers to hire him and why I'm very happy the Sixers did not hire him. He does not coach teams well in the playoffs. He doesn't make adjustments, and his offense is too simple. He's far, he relies far too much on singular ball-dominant guards, and he doesn't focus enough on like off-ball movement and stuff for that player. So I think if the Rockets get a good coach this season, we could debatably see the best season efficiency-wise of James Harden's career. And I expect him to perform better in the playoffs when he's not using like a 40% usage rate. All right, I think if he's used off-ball a little more, get some catch-and-shoots, that could be fantastic for his game. All right, so I understand why they have him this low. I would disagree with that. Next one, also disagree with. Steph Curry at number eight. I expect him to be better than this. People are underrating this dude, especially Jimmy Butler over Steph Curry. Come on. Product of recency bias? Yes, 100% this is a product for recency bias, okay? Jimmy Butler is, like, around number 10 on this list. Maybe a tiny bit lower, in my opinion, for next season, because he is getting older. Jimmy Butler is not better than Steph Curry or James Harden, and he won't be next season. Absolutely will not be. Seven players in the NBA I'd rather have my team come playoff time. Uh, that's kind of a fair argument, but I would still not agree with it, okay? Giannis Antetokounmpo, they don't have Ben Simmons on this list, do they? They don't have Ben Simmons on this list. You don't... And they had five honorable mentions, so they don't think Ben Simmons is going to be a top 30 player in the NBA next season. Come on, man. You're telling me you're going to take Pascal Siakam, okay? Kyle Lowry. Um, even, even like, John Morant. You're taking these guys over Ben Simmons? What the f What is wrong with you? This list is trash. Like, it's not that bad if I wasn't a Sixers fan, but it's trash. Giannis behind Anthony Davis. That's just dumb. Look, he just, he's, I think, I think that Giannis is going to be, spoiler alert, I think Giannis is going to be the best player in the league next season. 
Okay, I think he's going to work on his jump shot this offseason, get it, you know, keep improving, keep improving in multiple areas. He's a guy who works very, very hard, and he wants that title. So I expect him to be the best player in the league next season. He's definitely better than Anthony Davis. He's still better than Anthony Davis right now, okay? Anthony Davis was the second option in the Lakers. He was the second best player. Look, he was. He was the second best player on that team. Otherwise, number five is okay. Luka, number four. That might be a little tiny bit ballsy. I don't know if I would have him as high as four. So I think my top three is Giannis, LeBron, and Kawhi. Which, I guess this isn't here. They probably have Kevin Durant on here, I'm guessing. Um, Luka's around number five. He would be on there. I've got Steph Curry ahead of him. After that, I could see Luka being number five. So this is like one place ahead of where I would have him. So, yeah, I'm okay with this. Kawhi Leonard, number three, LeBron, number two, Kevin Durant, number one. Um, no. <laughs> Kevin Durant, no, he will not. Career-ending injury for some, torn Achilles, and being completely unknown how it will affect him, you're still going to take him as the best player in the NBA next season? Come on, man. Come on. Get out of here. Kevin Durant, look, I'm sorry. I want Kevin Durant to be good, okay? Despite the fact that I don't like him as a player, that's a terrible injury that no one should have to go through. And also, he's, he's an incredible talent to watch, and I want to see how good he can be on a real team, because I never got to watch Kevin Durant on OKC, all right? That was before I started watching basketball. I saw him on the Warriors when they were obscenely stacked, all right? And that's not nearly as fun. I want to see him and Kyrie be great next season. I just don't think he's going to be that good. Kevin Durant is not going to be a top three player in the NBA next season. I cannot see it. His injury was too serious. And he's already like 31 years old. I just don't think he's going to be that good. So, uh... Yeah, that was my that was my reaction to this. I missed, Did I miss Ben Simmons somewhere? Am I insane? They really didn't even mention Ben Simmons as an honorable mention. Come on. It's terrible... Terrible list, except it really wasn't that bad, but the fact that Joel Embiid was way too low and Ben Simmons was not on here, that's atrocious. That means it is a negative 17 out of 10. This list is bad, but it, it honestly could have been worse. So, yeah, that's my reaction. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll probably do more of these in the future as more lists like this come out, and I will probably be making my own um, Best Players in the NBA Next Season video soon. So, thank you all for watching. And please like the video, please subscribe to my channel, and check out some of my other content. Thank you.